Hey everyone, Sean Frangelli here with a new After Effects tutorial about how to use the Roto Brush and Refine Edge tool to extract moving elements from footage for all sorts of different VFX purposes. So the way we can use the Roto Brush is if we have footage like we see here and we didn't shoot on a green screen, but we need to put things in the middle of the scene behind something like a character, like we have my wife here who in this final shot throwing around a bunch of snow with some superpowers and we need to put elements behind her but in front of the buildings so we need to extract her from the scene in order to put her back on top of all the vfx or we could also use it for reasons like this second shot where we have an element like this face on this tree that isn't moving but the footage is moving over time and we want to do things like isolate it so that we could then adjust its color correction and compositing separately and the point of all this is that you could try to do it frame by frame with masks over time, but that would be really time consuming. So the Roto Brush will save us some time there and do a bit of the work for us. So let's get started with how this works. As this example, here we have this final shot where again, there's a lot of 3D VFX happening over time. There's 3D snowballs in front of her and behind her. So we need to composite those in 3D. And here's our original shot without any of the VFX happening. So what we need to do is isolate our subject. So the way we can do that, if we jump into After Effects and look at this original shot, is first we wanna make sure we're at the beginning of our composition and we wanna make sure that our resolution is on full. That's gonna be important for when we start doing this. Then to get started with ripping this thing out of our footage, we're gonna go up to our Roto Brush tool right here, click that and double click on our layer of our footage and that's gonna open our layer panel. And you can see we have this green selection cursor. So what we want to do is go in and paint with the left mouse what we want to keep. So in this case, our figure, and then zoom in and alt click to unselect what we don't want. So here we have the grass. And as we're doing this, we can hold command and drag the mouse left or right to make the brush bigger or smaller. So what we want to do is get a mainframe and paint in everything that we have. Now, as we're doing that, we can see that down here, it's made this little gold dot. And there's this little span that we can drag left and right. So what it's doing is creating a keyframe of information based on what we painted and unpainted to create this line around our subject. And it's gonna to continue to use that information for as long as this span exists. So you'd wanna do as much work as you can to go through each frame and make sure it's not moving or getting off and fix little errors like we have here. And it's gonna keep using that information that you build up over the time of this span. So if there's a lot going on, you might wanna jump ahead and make additional keyframes. You can see we're not in that span, so we need to start over. Or if it's pretty close, you could drag that span out further in your footage. And as we're doing this and isolating this, we can view this different ways. By default, it's this pink line. We also could take a look at our mat that we're creating. So this is really what we're working towards. We also could see it on just a red background to really see what we're extracting, as well as change the color and turn up the opacity of this little red outline. Now we wanna keep going through each frame and checking this and making sure that we're getting our character isolated quickly. And that's not fun for anyone to watch a video of just that because it'd be incredibly boring. So through the magic of video editing, here we are going through that process quite a bit quicker until we get to the end of our footage and we have everything outlined and separated. So now here we have that done. So if we scrub through our footage, we can see that the mat is jumping to where it's supposed to be. And again, it's important to keep in mind that what we're really dealing with is this edge. So if we look at that in this mode, we have this edge line and we can adjust and shift that a little more if we need to. We can see that edges are a little harsh. And over here on the left is our effect that we can adjust a little further. So we could feather that edge a bit and take a look at how that's impacting our mat push up the contrast, shift the edge, positive or negative, and reduce chatter if we need to, which will tweak the pixels that that line is going through in case it happens to fall in between pixels and trying to clean that up. Now you can see it gets pretty close, but on little details like our edges and things like hair or if things are in the grass, you can see it's a little too blocky and that's why they added this second tool that goes along with this, the refine edge tool. And what this lets us do after we've done this first roto brush process is get this second tool, which will be this purple edge. And similarly, we can paint, but now we just wanna go along the edge. And what that's gonna do is really clean up these edges after we let go of the mouse. You can see 
Now it's going beyond just that line and trying to calculate and figure out an alpha mat for fine details like our hair and our edges. So it's not just this solid line that we can feather, but it's really this mat that is transitioning from black to white through these intermediate grays that'll get a lot better of a job once we do this. So similarly, we'd want to go through time and make sure that's getting pretty close. And now once we're done with, and we can see over here on our effect, it'll light up this second area where in addition to adjusting our mat, we can adjust our refined edge mat. So if we look at it in this mode, now we can really see the detail that we're getting on some of these edges and we can smooth that out, feather that a bit, as well as push the contrast, which will help with some of those little spikes that we were seeing. We turn that up and we can also adjust things like chatter reduction if we want it more detailed or smoother. You can see how it's really fixing those edges decontaminate edge colors and motion blur back into our footage if we know that it's moving. So now that we've done that and after we again diligently go through this process, when we're done with this and we want to lock that, we'd want to click freeze and that's going to go through each frame and lock in what we've been doing. So once it's ran that process of freezing those frames, now we'll see if we move our brush, we have this slash through it and it will not do anything on lock and freeze our roto brush and refine edge tool settings until we unfreeze it if we needed to edit it further. And now if we go back into the composition window for that project, now we can see it's isolated our subject from our background over time if we skip through and we're getting that partial transparency on the edges. And again, we can push this a little further and shift that a little to clean up some of those spikes. Now, the use of this is that we have this separated. So if we duplicated our original footage and then just had it as the footage, now we can have a layer that's our background. I could just call that background and a layer that's just our roto brushed character. And then if we needed to put anything in between the two, let's just say this shape for an example, it will sit in between the two and the edges will have a soft fall off and that can exist over time. So if we were doing something like compositing and we wanted to track everything and then have a floor that would sit on the ground and have everything line up and do all that process. And I'll just drop this grid in there for reference. Then we could put any effects that are on the ground in between those two layers and the roto brush layer would block that off. And again, if we need to adjust that, we can see we're getting a little bit of it spilling in here. We could always go back up into our effect and tweak those as we need. So it can be really useful. And again, on this second example, we could use it for a totally different reason. Say we wanted to isolate this mask and same idea, have our back plate and then our front plate that we could drop any color correction or effects on top of. We can also use it as a way to isolate elements over time that are moving or the camera's moving just to tweak and color correct and make adjustments. So it's a really useful tool in After Effects. It can definitely save you some time beyond just masking everything out frame by frame because that's no fun and no one wants that job. And really be a great tool to add to your arsenal of VFX and compositing tools. So I hope you learned a lot. And if you want to learn more about VFX, compositing and tracking and continue on with stuff like this with things like 2D tracking, 3D tracking, After Effects compositing. Be sure to check out some of my other tutorials where we get into all sorts of subjects like that using After Effects, Cinema 4D and all sorts of stuff. So be sure to click any of those thumbnails to keep learning and jump into some other quick tutorials. And if you want to get more videos, you can subscribe to the channel at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella and you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella. If you have any questions, requests for tutorials, or want to interact that way. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? 
You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash Sean Frangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.